Hi everyone, Stepan here. Today I'm going to show you the closed Sicilian, the main variation to all the open Sicilian lines we know, like the Nidorf, the Dragon, the Scheveningen, the Sveshnikov, the Kalashnikov. All the most popular Sicilians are open Sicilians and they happen when white plays d4. If white doesn't play d4, then generally that's considered to be a closed Sicilian. Now, many people previously have only considered this position to be the closed Sicilian. So when black plays c5, white plays knight c3, black plays knight c6, and white plays g3. Now g3 is white's most common setup in the closed Sicilian, and you could say that g3 is the proper closed Sicilian, where white tries to fianchetto. But today I'm going to look at all the options after knight c3, everything black can play, and setups for white that don't include a fianchetto. Okay, so after c5, when you play knight f3, you don't necessarily have to play d4 going into an open Sicilian. You can delay that. But if you plan to play the closed Sicilian, normally you start with knight c3. And there is a simple reason why. First of all, in some lines, when you fianchetto, you want to have a bishop on g2 not blocked by the knight. Secondly, this knight may wish to come to e2 supporting something other than d4. I have often played positions with an eventual g4, f4, g4, and then this knight comes to g3 to support the attack. And most importantly, the reason people play knight c3 instead of knight f3 is so that they would be able to play f4 in some positions, and if there's a knight on f3, you cannot do that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to focus on ideas instead of theory. Normally, that's not what I do in opening videos. I'm still going to give you an overview of main variations. But since I've been playing the close Sicilian a lot, uh, I have, I think, a good understanding of the ideas. And I'm going to focus on the structures, attacking teams, uh, problems for white, problems for black, and so on. So this is the start of the close Sicilian. Black has several options. We're going to be looking at three main options for black. e6, a6, which are the alternatives, and knight c6, which is the main line. And <clears throat> black can transpose to the main lines at any point with, let's say, 2d6 or 2g6, or even 2e6, 2a6, we can still enter the main lines, but the main way to go into them is knight c6, and 2e6 and 2a6 are the only two moves that signify a deviation from the main setup for black. So we are going to look at them separately. Personally, I believe that a6 is the trickiest move to face. Okay, so let me show you the setup first. Let me show you the general theme of the opening before we get into any lines. So this setup for black is the main response to the proper close Sicilian. When I say proper close Sicilian, I, I'm talking about a position where white fianchetto is the king's bishop, so g3, bishop, g2, plays d3 instead of d4, delays the development of the g1 knight, and eventually either plays f4 to start the king's side attack, or plays bishop e3 and queen d2, to exchange the g7 bishop, the main defender of the black king. Black responds to that with a sort of closed dra dragon position. So if white had played d4 instead of d3, we can just put that on the board now for the moment. Let's say white is able to recapture this. I'm just putting random moves on the board. So let's say we have this position. This would be a regular sort of dragon setup for black. In our main position, black plays the same thing. It's just that white hasn't played d4. What does that mean? Well, in every position, we have to consider the pawn breaks first. Pawn advances and pawn breaks are the way to change the nature of the position and make progress. The easiest way to find to identify pawn breaks for each side is to follow the pawn chain. So if we draw an arrow following white's pawn chain, and if we then draw an arrow following black's pawn chain, it's very simple to see that black should play b4, b5, b4, and white should play f5, 
f4 f5 that's the way to break open the position favorably generally you want to play on the side of the board where you are stronger okay if you would like to follow this video easily i have prepared a pgn file you can find the link to it in the description below and i'm also going to show you a way to learn this and practice this easily if you're looking for a more effective way to learn openings try out chessbook it's a great tool for studying openings it's very easy to use it focuses on moves that people actually play it explains the plans in certain positions and it's going to highlight the mistakes you made in your games so when come to chessbook we go to our white repertoire we import the pgn file well you don't have to do that but i will import the close sicilian file now and you are ready to practice your repertoire the easiest possible way no i don't want to trim anything i'll keep my whole rapper whole repertoire now you can continue building it obviously my pgn file doesn't cover everything that's possible after the close sicilian Once so now let's go to my white repertoire it says i have mastered 15 percent of it it's 48 percent built and this is a new feature which i really like my repertoire has a higher expected win rate than 48 percent of players at my level which is fine okay and then another feature is soundness it's it's fine this is pretty 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 sound so now what you can do is you can learn your repertoire or you can continue building it so let's continue learning you can try a specific variation you can look at plants in your opening which is great after each move you're going to get plans in that opening and you can also focus on opening mistakes you played in your opening so you connect your lead chess your chess.com and chessbook is going to tell you the mistakes i just love chessbook if you haven't used it yet uh please try it out there's a link in the description it's about eight dollars a month uh even less paid yearly so these are the pawn breaks and generally in the close sicilian with this main setup black is going to play for b5 b4 white is going to play for f4 f5 now that's not completely necessary sometimes it cannot be achieved sometimes there are alternatives but generally white is going to be attacking the king side black is going to be attacking the queen side what does that mean if we remember the king's indian for example and this is actually a very very similar opening if we let me just put a king's indian position on the board so d4 knight f6 c4 g6 knight c3 d6 e4 bishop g7 let's say bishop e2 castles knight f3 does this remind you of something when black plays e5 and knight c6 this is going to be the same setup white is playing in the close sicilian it's the same setup let's look at this once again so white has a kingside fianchetto white has a pawn on e4 so once again this is the same position so in the close sicilian white is basically playing a king's indian attack okay and we know that in the king's indian black plays f5 kingside attack crazy okay and white if we go back to the king's indian once again wants to play c5 undermine the center in many positions white is going to play uh the move b4 so something like this this is just the main line of the king's indian the knight drops to e7 and now the bayonet attack is one of the main ways to play so look at the similarity black wants to play f5 white wants to play c5 let's go back to the close sicilian so once again in this case white is black so white is playing a king's indian attack black wants to do this undermine the queen side white wants to play f4 f5 so most often white is going to play for a king side attack which means that if white succeeds black is under mating threats if black succeeds white loses the c pawn the b pawn the rook on a1 or the exchange on a1 black breaks through and i've played many many close sicilian games with white not with black and i can tell you that the fact that your attack is on the king side is very pleasant it's far less risky for white now the second point i would like to make is that the close sicilian lines are suboptimal compared to the open sicilian the engine doesn't approve of them black is always equal very often slightly better 
and they are forcing lions 20 moves deep, which allow black to, to equalize. Okay, that being said, we are going to go into a relative theory. So e4, uh, sorry, c5, knight c3, knight c6, as we said, is the main move. Now, we are going to be looking at two different setups for white. One of them is g3. And normally against knight c6, personally, I don't play that. I go into bishop b5 lines. Bishop b5, I consider it to be the close Sicilian. Many people do, but some people don't. Some people think that only g3 is the close Sicilian. If this has a separate name, please let me know. The idea behind bishop b5 is that you would like to take on c6, similarly to what you do in the Rosolimo attack, but you don't have a knight on f3. Let me show you why that's important. If we start with a regular knight f3, knight c6, Rosolimo, bishop b5, and black plays, let's say, g6, which is their main move, normally you take, black takes with either pawn, let's say this pawn, and then d3, white continues developing. White would love to be able to play f4 in the Rosolimo, in many lines. That's a good uh, way to start the attack. However, once we play bishop b5 after knight c3, we are threatening to take the knight. And I've faced this many times. People will play g6, I will take, they will take back, and now I just have f4. I don't have to move my knight to start an attack. That's why most people against bishop b5 are going to play knight d4. Okay, so that's one setup we're going to be looking at. The other setup is g3, of course, sorry, instead of bishop b5. Normal close Sicilian lines. That's going to be the focus of our attention. Now, the main deviations for black, as I said, are d6, e6, g6, and a6. d6 and g6 are going to transpose to the main line with knight e6. 99% of the time. So just play the setup you would like to play against knight c6. Obviously, it's not as good to play bishop b5 if there's no knight c6. So I would recommend that you go with g3 and the lines we're going to look at, which are the main lines. e6 and a6 have something different about them. a6 prepares an early b5, a very early expansion which allows b4, and e6 allows an early d5. And in many cases, e6, d5 will lead to completely unconventional positions for the close Sicilian. And the positions are going to be equal and much easier to play. Okay, let me, my coffee is on the other desk. Give me a second. All right. So let's begin. We are going to start with the sidelines first. Let's look at a6. So, e4, c5, knight c3, a6. We know what black is trying to do. Black wants to play b5. Against this, there are two setups I've played. One of them technically should not be considered the close Sicilian at all. But this was my preparation for Josip Tonkovic about four months ago. So you don't play g3 first, you play knight g2. And Knight g2 is a useful move because this knight could end up on g3, but it can also support d4 and it doesn't block f4. So after e6, you now play g3, b5, bishop g2, bishop to b7. And your idea, once black commits to this, sorry, I may sneeze. Once black commits to this a6, b5, anti-close Sicilian, is to now play d4. And... I don't know if we can call this the close Sicilian. I still may sneeze. I'm really sorry if I do. It's going to be loud. So we play d4, punishing them for playing slowly on the queen side. And after cd4, knight d4, most people are going to play queen c7. Then we castle. And believe it or not, if black plays knight f6 here, a, a careless move, it's already plus two for white. Why? We play rook e1, black is too far away from castling, most people are going to prevent e5 with d6, and now we play knight d5. So this is just one idea, this is one trap that I've prepared for my opponent, and he did fall into this trap previously against the Croatian Fide Master. So this is something you can try out. 
We can argue whether this is the close Sicilian after d4. I would say it probably isn't. But I just wanted to show you this so that uh, so that you would get an idea of how punishing a6 with d4 eventually can be good. Because a6 is the slowest of the three moves. Now, let's get into the meat of the a6 variation. One thing I would like to mention is that there's a separate line, which can happen after knight c6 most often, called the Grand Prix attack. I have made a video on this, and the Grand Prix is different because the bishop doesn't go to g2. In most cases in the Grand Prix, you play knight f3 and the bishop goes either to c4 or to b5, sometimes even to e2, playing a reverse dutch. So the Grand Prix attack is separate. Uh, a6, g3 is the main way for white to play. Black is going to play b5. We go bishop g2, black goes bishop b7, we go d3, not d4. And now black can play b4 or g6 immediately. e6 is the main setup, so that's what I'm going to be showing you. And now white gets to choose. All three options for white I are kind of risky, and black should be fine equal against all of them, which is why I think this idea with a6 is tricky for white to face, which is exactly why I played 3 knight g2, the variation I showed you a minute ago, against, or I wanted to play it against my last opponent. White has to develop the king side. You have three options, knight h3, which may seem strange, but it's actually a pretty nice move that gives you the option to play knight g5, it also prevents, uh, prepares f4 and maybe knight f2. And the knight is useful. You can play knight f3, which is the simplest move, but it blocks the f-pawn, or you can play f4. I think f4 is in the spirit of the opening, and it's the main line for a reason. And I'm going to show you just how dangerous this can be. Black should play d5. There really is no other sensible option, and most people are going to do that. And now white has a very pleasant choice. Queen e2 is still the main move, sort of. But you can advance the e-pawn, you can advance the f-pawn, or you can take on d5. Queen e2, I think, is very easy for black to play against. The idea behind queen e2 is to defend the pawn, to prevent takes, takes, and the queen exchange, because white is playing aggressively, and to, well, prepare taking, because you, you just win a pawn, so black would have to react. However, normal close Sicilian attacking moves are either e5 or f5. e5 is the setup I love to play, and this is the setup my ex-coach uh, used to play all the time. He ha probably has a hundred games in this pawn structure. The idea behind e5 is that you create a long-term threat of advancing your kingside pawns, you're challenging the diagonal, and your pieces have excellent squares. If black's d-pawn ever advances, then knight e4 is crushing. So for example, knight e7, looking at f5, uh, knight c2, and you want to do something like this, uh, knight bc6, knight f3, you can see that white's pieces are very naturally placed. Once this knight comes out to f5, you may be able to chase it away immediately after castles. You may be able to play c3, simply preventing the knight from doing any damage. So that's one setup. And if I had to recommend something against a6, I would say this is the setup to go for. And you can find many games with a similar move order or this move order, and I would advise you to look at the ideas in those games. The more aggressive option that could backfire is f5 straight away. Now, black's move here is very counterintuitive. Black should play d4. That's the only way to remain relatively equal. After d4, we can now take on e6 and our knight is immune. If black now takes on, on c3, then e takes f7 is very close to a winning position for white. We don't even care about this knight. We play knight f3, 
The knight's coming to these squares. We're gonna castle. The queen has access to g4, h5, f3. The bishop has g5. The best move for black is king e8, and that's the only move that doesn't lose. So this is very, very, very scary. So after f5, d4 is the best move. And we get this position after fe6, fe6, if black knows what they're doing. Once again, this is very scary for black. We play knight b1, which is the normal way to react to d4. And this knight will guard c4. It will come out to f3 if necessary. It may sit on e5. It may come to g5. We have shut down this bishop. This pawn is weak. The diagonal towards the black king is open. So it's just a very pleasant attacking attacking line. After f5, black can also go badly wrong. Uh, if black, let's say, plays b4 and ignores us, then the engine says losing. I think it's much better for, for white. I wouldn't go as far as losing. So fe6, fe6, knight a4. These two squares. The queen once again has h5. We're threatening to take maybe queen e2. We have knight f3, knight e5, knight f3, knight g5. This king is stuck in the center. So that's one possible mistake. And after f5, if ef5 is played, then this is just the worst of all options. We play knight takes d5. If this bishop is traded off, the e-file opens, our bishop is unopposed. And once again, black is far away from developing their pieces. So, in conclusion, f5 is the scariest, most aggressive line. Uh, e5 is long-term advantage if you want to play for that. And queen e2 is, I would say, the safest move, but it allows black to be equal easily. Now, let's move on to e6. So after e4, c5, knight c3, e6, there's only one reason black would like to play e6 here, and that's to play a quick d5. If we play knight f3, we are just transposing to the normal Khan Taimanov lines and we, we don't want to do that. So we're going to be playing against d5. f4 is very risky. This isn't necessarily the Grand Prix, but I would call it the Grand Prix. Playing f4 very early on is not a good idea because d5 just breaks the position open. The best move here is knight f3 and then d4, knight e4, knight c6. And black is perfectly equal. So against this, we are anticipating d5. We are, we are going to fight for that square immediately. We play g3. Okay, d5. And now uh, you can play d3. You can play bishop g2. But those lead to a ton of complications. If, for example, bishop g2, then d4. Knight c2, d3. Not a pleasant position very very hard to play if d3 of course black has the option to take to advance to play knight f6 if bishop g2 then d4 d4 queen d1 king d1 not or knight d1 not ideal so against this this is called the korchnoi defense or the korchnoi variation against the early e6 d5 we are going to take black of course has to take with the pawn and we are going to play d4 this is the key line in which we are going to have a fianchetto on g2 against an isolated queen's pawn. And after a lot of experimentation with f4 and trying to make it work, I've decided to play this against the Korchnoi. It's just the simplest way to play. Uh, if cd, we can safely take with the queen because knight c6 can be met with bishop b5. Although we don't have to do that. If knight c6, we can just play queen takes d5. If knight c6 is played before knight f6. If knight c6 is played after knight f6, then we will have played bishop g5 already. So let me show you. If knight f6, we don't play bishop g2. We play bishop g5. And that way we prevent our queen from being chased away and so on and so on. So knight f6, bishop g5, let's say bishop e7, and we just continue developing. You can see that this is pleasant for white. It's not an advantage according to the engine, but you have a blockaded, isolated queen spawn in black's position. Our bishop on, on g2 is going to be a pretty good piece. We can also play bishop b5 check. We can also castle queen side. We have a lot of options. So it's a flexible setup in which, of course, black is fine, but we have a, a small long-term advantage. 
All right, now let's go into the two main positions. I'm going to show you bishop b5 first. So c5, knight c3, knight c6, bishop b5. I played this for a long time. And if black doesn't know what they're doing, white can win quickly, very easily. If black knows their stuff, white is going to have a hard time keeping things equal, in my opinion. And there are also tricks in this opening. So black plays knight d4. Black doesn't have to play knight d4, but if they don't, if they play d6, e6, uh, or g6, we just take and go into that line where you're able to play f4 because there's no knight on f3, and you just go for a simple kingside attack. So most people are going to go knight d4, and we save the bishop with bishop c4. Again, you don't have to. This is just the best move. Black is going to play e6, playing for d5, knight g2. Knight f3 is a possible alternative. We don't play this to take, we play this to develop the knight and, and castle. Knight f6, castles. Okay, now, uh, black can lose this game in a single move. There's a very famous trap here, which isn't easy to spot unless you know it. And the, the only move for black is a6. a6 prepares d5. If you play d5 without a6, you lose. Why? Because long term bishop b5 check is going to win white the game. I'm going to explain everything, but that's the main idea. a6 prevents bishop b5, therefore it prepares d5. If you play d5 immediately, white is winning. e takes d5, e takes d5, and white gives up a knight temporarily. Knight takes d5. Of course, black has to take the piece. If they don't, we just take on f6. So knight takes d5. And now what's the point? Well, our queen can double attack the knight and the f7 pawn. So we get rid of the piece in front of the queen. Knight takes. Once again, if black doesn't take, we're just up material. So takes. And queen h5. And now if you play knight f6, saving the knight and the f pawn, seemingly you don't save the f pawn, you just get mated on f7. So the knight cannot move. The rook is coming to e1. How do you defend the knight? If you move it, you get mated. The only way to defend is bishop e6. And now we increase the pressure, rook e1. We're threatening rook takes e6 because the pawn is pinned. Now, a sensible defense that works if black has played a6 is knight f4. Why? Because the bishop's defended and the queen is attacked. However, if there is no pawn on a6, white can play bishop b5, winning the game immediately. The only move is king e7. This bishop is pinned. You don't want to give up the queen because you give it up with check. So after king e7, we save the queen, queen h4 check, then we pick up the knight. Game over. Therefore, most people are just going to give up this bishop. They are going to go bishop e7. We are going to take our piece back, rook e6, castles. We bring the rook back and we're just up a pawn in a much better position with the bishop pair, with the weak pawn on d4. This, on, on grandmaster level, this is winning for white. On my level and below, and well, even slightly higher rated people have messed this up, but it should be winning. A clean pawn up, a structural advantage, and the bishop pair. So, instead of blundering with d5, which, by the way, I've only had happen against me in training games. No one has played this against me in a tournament game. Instead of that, black plays a6. And now knight f4 saves the day. Because there is no bishop b5. Let me just show you like the same line. If, if a4, uh, d5, ed5, ed5, white plays bishop, e2, bishop a2 here. White doesn't give up the piece. If white blunders with knight takes d5, which my friend Vladko did against me uh, in a blitz game two months ago, and I told him as soon as he played this, oh, it doesn't work after a6. So if this happens, then knight d5, and if we try the same thing, knight d4, cd4, queen h5, bishop e6, rook e1, the knight f4, and that's it. You don't have bishop b5. How are you going to continue? I don't even know what the engine says here. It says minus one, rook e6, best move. And then, of course, knight e6. Okay, so on ed5, white retreats the bishop, doesn't lose the piece. And this is the problem. So our position is kind of cramped. Uh, black 
has well two good bishops and two good knights after something like bishop d6 d3 knight e6 king h1 is one of the moves this is what i play bishop e7 knight g3 b5 knight f5 white is gonna temporarily win a pawn in most cases or win the bishop pair but black is going to have sufficient counterplay so if you want something that's not thematic if you don't want to constantly play g3 bishop g2 f4 like a robot then this is a good alternative especially because bishop b5 as i said can lead to positions where black plays one of these moves and allows you to go into an improved grand prix attack or they can mess up with with a premature d5 losing the game now let's focus on the main move so e4 c5 knight c3 knight c6 g3 this is the close sicilian this is what people consider to be the close sicilian most people now i i told you that black fianchetto wing is the main setup and we are going to focus on that however black can play with the bishop on e7 so after e6 bishop g2 if they play knight f6 and then bishop e7 this is going to be slightly different and far less dangerous for white i really enjoy playing against this after castles castles we do the same thing we don't we don't deviate rook b8 of course black is playing for this pawn break f4 let's say d5 e takes e takes we can now play f5 blocking in this bishop our knight has f4 this pawn is kind of weak this diagonal isn't a problem at all this is just one sample variation but i wanted to show you the the pattern if the bishop is put on e7 then white really will not have any issues along the diagonal the a1 h8 diagonal is the problem for white in the close sicilian if the bishop's on e7 that's just secure so g3 let's look at g6 again black can reach the main line via several different move orders black can start with d6 uh, e6 a6 knight f6 but eventually we are going to reach the same position bishop g2 bishop g7 d3 d6 okay so this is our starting position let's say and here is where white decides on how to play there are a ton of moves here you can play bishop g5 knight f3 knight h3 knight g2 but two main moves which i would like to focus on are bishop e3 and f4 they are different i would say that f4 is a bit more risky because it doesn't develop anything it opens up this diagonal but it's also more aggressive bishop e3 let's look at that first is a strategic move that isn't played to cover d4 it's played to exchange the main defender of the black king and once you achieve that then you can start the attack now black has a ton of options black has e5 which i really like black has other options too and i would just like to show you one pattern which you can remember and and well make sure you remember it this is played in the rosolimo it's played in the close sicilian it's played in well any position where black has a reverse marozzi bind and that's knight f6 d7 f8 e6 d4 this is something you can expect when black plays e5 and this knight landing on d4 is going to be very very scary unless you wish to move your c knight play c3 but then you're sort of giving black a target for b5 b4 and there's a hook black can undermine so this is e5 is one option black doesn't have to play e5 of course black can play e6 uh, black can play rook b8 black can play knight f6 knight d4 there are many moves but let's focus on the ideas rook b8 is the main sort of move that prepares the most thematic and best idea which is to play b5 b4 and let's look at this bishop targeting b2 let's look at this pawn coming down the board well if the knight moves bishop takes b2 is kind of annoying so that's what black is playing for black plays rook b8 so early so that the bishop could not be exchanged uh, before black starts the attack so we play queen d2 obviously we don't have bishop h6 until the knight moves so black can just safely play b5 we have to develop 
okay b4 we have to save the pawn so knight d1 i mean knight a4 is kind of weird uh we actually lose to queen a5 b3 bishop takes a1 wins the full rook so so knight d1 and you can see black's point black wants to annihilate the queen side we on the other hand are going to be focusing on the king side so let's say knight d4 again there are other moves but let's say e6 uh, knight c1 knight e7 c3 okay we have to chase the knight away b takes b takes knight dc6 bishop h6 okay so after black castles we take the king takes and you can see that black has made significant progress on the queen side queen a5 is going to be annoying d5 is going to be annoying maybe a5 a4 a3 rook b2 is going to be annoying however white has knight e3 f4 knight e3 knight g4 f4 g4 h4 h5 it's a double-edged position in which once again if white makes a mistake they're going to lose queenside material if black makes a mistake they're getting mated which is again why i like the close sicilian for white exchanging this g7 bishop is a very smart idea now you you don't have trouble along the diagonal but what i prefer instead of bishop e3 and going for this exchange is the immediate f4 and this is a very concrete way to play comparing it to the grand prix attack where this pawn is on g2 and this bishop is let's say on c4 or on b5 this is much safer Firstly, the expansion doesn't come with tempo. Secondly, this bishop secures our king, and it also targets this diagonal. So I, I've had a quick win uh, where my opponent played a6, I played knight e2, they played b5, and I played e5. And I actually won the game pretty easily, because now, I mean, what do you do? You have to defend the knight, something like bishop b7 or queen c7. Uh, my opponent played bishop b7, and they ended up sacking this pawn. My opponent didn't accept, and then I got this crushing structure and eventually won. It was a training game online. So against f4, it's very easy to go wrong, and this bishop is very strong. Most people are going to play e6, and we continue with knight f3, they continue with knight g7, and both sides castle. You could say that this is the starting position. And we still develop the bishop to e3. Notice how the knight isn't on f6. If the knight was on f6, this is a pattern I would like to highlight. Play h3 before bishop e3 so that you don't run into knight g4 f5 with tempo. But now, since the knight is on e7, bishop e3 is fine. Knight d4. Now, white can do several things here. I actually prefer the move queen d2 here. I also like rook b1. I, I play rook b1 in almost any close Sicilian, which you can see in my previous close Sicilian games. And then my ex ex coach would say, Why did you play rook b1? What the hell does that do? Well, I want to move my knight, and I don't want to hang the b pawn. And I also generally would like to get away from the bishop on g7. So rook b1 is my favorite move here. But the main move is e5. And the one thing you have to decide is how are you going to start attacking? One thing I love to do. And I'm going to show you an alternative to to these setups. Uh, is against e6, I will play knight g2, and then when they play knight g7, castles, uh, castles, and then I play g4. And I've actually played this exact thing in my previous game. The idea is, after let's say rook b8 king h1 b5 bishop e3 b4 sorry not bishop e3 but knight g3 after b4 now the knight gets replaced on e2 it has a safe square and this knight is on f5 and h5 and i actually got a winning position with this pattern so this is one pattern you can remember the engine just says equal it doesn't matter but if you play black doesn't this look scary the prospect of all four pawns marching forward i mean i would be terrified with black so after rook b8 there are many moves many many moves uh many many moves queen d2 sorry uh where are we yeah if you, here after excuse me after knight d4 so e5 is the main move i like rook b1 and after rook b1 there are many moves for black but let's focus on the main idea just to show you e5 this gives away the f5 square but it's put but it puts pressure on d6 and it opens up the bishop 
So black plays knight f5, we save the bishop, takes, queen takes, and knight d4. Okay, we have to save c2, we don't want to give up the bishop, so queen d1. This is sort of the starting position uh, of the e5 line, and I think unless you know the theory extremely well, it's very hard to get an advantage, because obviously black can now just take the pawn on e5, but your bishops are good, and the e4 square is great for the knight at the moment, and you may just recapture on c5. But I would advise you to play my move, rook b1. It's very good to wait and see what black does to commit in the close Sicilian. Okay, so I hope I've managed to explain all three moves well. Uh, I would love to hear what you think about this format of not focusing on theory, but highlighting the ideas instead. Let me know what you think, and let me know if you plan to play the close Sicilian. Stay tuned for more chess. Bye-bye.